What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, DC the Cool, back in another video. Today's topic is Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, review. So we're gonna go ahead and get right into this thing, we're gonna talk about this game, I'm gonna tell you why it's there, I'm gonna tell you what my overall thoughts of this game are, about being 45, 50 hours-ish in, um, so far. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get right into it. So, the game is good, I'm enjoying the game, I would recommend people to play this game, it's a really good game. Um, there's some issues I have with the game, some things, nothing too crazy, but those things I do have a problem with with the game, and we're going to go ahead and get into that and talk about it. So, the game has a lot of options. The shop and customize, of course. You can customize your characters, you know, their gear, their outfits, their accessories, which is really cool. You know, you get to go in here and choose the Powerpo Goku, choose the gear he's wearing, you know, this is kind of be like the default, instead of to pick it every single time. So it makes it easier for you, a faster, uh, more streamlined way of, you know, having your character. They have like the Fortnite kind of background type thing going on here. Um, and you can choose an emote. There's some uh, like actual taunt you can do in battle, which I think is pretty cool. Um, I like taunt system, so I think that's pretty cool. You choose the battle stance, you can choose the line he says, things along those lines. So we also have these uh, capsules. These capsules can be used in game. And they have different, you know, um, abilities. Some will make your characters burst dash faster. Some characters, some of them will give you a health boost. Some of them will give you an attack boost. Things along those lines. You also can just go buy your characters instead of uh, having to go through the whole story mode to get a bunch of people. Some people just go ahead and buy, which is pretty cool. Some people have their favorite character who might be in here. Um, as you go further through the story, more characters become available to unlock. Um, but you know, it's easy there you go ahead and go ahead you got the money Um, you have the ultimate edition or deluxe edition you come with a, a certain amount of money off GP So you just go ahead and buy your character and get your favorite character Which I know a lot of people like because you can save yourself a lot of time by going through the long Story of Dragon Ball, you know, so this is pretty cool. And you get to buy the variation of the character. They all um, Cost money as you see it's not just one character and you get their all variations. Nope. You gotta buy each individual costume variation of said character. Um, but that's okay. I don't really mind that too much. I think it, um, you know, it's it's fine. I don't really have an issue with this. You also get to have these uh, emote voices. These voice clips that they can say. You know, the actual voice lines they will say. You get to have these as well. You know, which is pretty cool. I mean, just, just more um, collectible type stuff that they have in the game. They have a lot of stuff in the game for you to collect. Um, a lot of busy work if you into that type of thing. Um, you know, you completion this, people going for 100%, things along those lines. These are cool, but me personally, I really want to waste money on these. I would rather just go ahead and put my money uh, into something else. Um, I mean, there's no really particular line. I'm just like a huge fan of the ones that I do think are sweet. They already say in game. For example, Goku Super Saiyan 3, he says before he launches the attack, if I don't, who will, which is the exact quote from the movie. So I'm already cool on that. You know, here you can change the background music for your sparking, uh, your sparking stage, your sparking state. You go to sparking state, it's a regular generic thing they have that everybody gets, but you actually choose which thing you want. So this is pretty cool. That's pretty cool they have that feature. Of course, we got the main menu mode, which is interactive. I love this feature. I think it's really cool. Fan service in this game is great. Yeah, of course, you have your Xeno challenges, your wish challenges, you know, which unlock uh, things for you for participating in those challenges. Of course, you have player matches, play with friends, team, not team, CPU for CPU, World Tournament, ring on, ring off. A lot of options here, custom battle, which of course is just endless battles you can make for storyline purposes. Of course, the story mode itself, which you have here, you can pick up to... I believe it was seven characters, Piccolo, Frieza, Goku Black, regular Goku, Gohan, um, Vegeta, um, you know, and you go through the story, and Jiren as well, you go through the story, um, and their perspective, from their perspective, and their point of view in the battle. This is cool, I have a problem with this, I thought this, I'm, I'm really enjoying this personally, actually, I'm actually really enjoying this story, because a lot of people, you know, they are, uh, oh well, the story is lazy, it's cutscenes and this and that, or it's, uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, slideshows or whatever. I don't understand, how do you complain about playing the same story over and over again? They condense the story from the main points that matter to keep the plot moving forward, and then you still complain. That doesn't make sense to me, I don't I don't understand that. I like the story more, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying what they're doing personally. So, that's just me. Um, but, 
and you look at the world here, this almost has a Budokai 2 kind of effect. A Budokai 2 style with how you go from level to level, um, board game style or whatever, branching paths, which is with those arrows with the green mean, branching paths. You know, they have original stories, original content, original what-if stuff. And it's, it's pretty good, too, because I've been playing them, and I thought it was going to be a one-off. But no, this is actually full-fledged original stories to go through entire arcs, um, almost like Xenoverse. Um, these are really sweet. I really enjoy the story, the way they, they crafted it. And we also have the maps here, which is 12 maps. Some you can select day, evening, or night. Um, but I got to give it a ding, man. These, these games are characters and maps. And the maps are 12. They're, they're great 12 maps, but that's not enough. That's just, that's just so not enough. There's so many maps missing. You ain't no glacier map in here. You don't have the, the lookout tower in here. You don't have a comics lookout tower, an iconic map, a classic map. Comics lookout tower is in the game. That's crazy. There's so many maps missing um, that I got to give a, a ding for this. This is nowhere near as many maps as it was in Tenkaichi 3. You know, and this basically is the sequel to Tenkaichi 3 or Tenkaichi in general. And yeah, way more maps. So many maps in this game that aren't missing. That, I mean, excuse me, that are missing. That uh, I, I just uh, can't let slide. So let's get into the pros and cons of the game. Pros, graphics are great. Beautiful looking game, aesthetically pleasing, gameplay, fast, frantic, and fun. Really enjoy it. There's a lot of options, you know, with the options of, you know, I'll say the challenge mode stuff, uh, the world tournament, the team battles, whether you have the DP system on or off, you will play your friends, of course, a rank match scene, team battles or singles, you know, uh, of course, offline matches, the story mode. Um, you know, of course, it's Perunga, Shinron, and, uh, the Namekian Dragon, and the Super, the Super, the, yeah, there's the Super, uh, Dragon Balls as well, the Yellow Gold Dragon from Universe 6. So, overall, in the custom battle, of course, overall, there's a lot to do in the game, and you'll have more enough time, and more enough things to get involved in with the game over the course of time. So, those are all pros. Um, cons would be for me. There's a feature in the game where you lock off after you switch between part, uh, teammates in the game. It was cool the first time, a couple times, but it is mad annoying locking off in the middle of a heated fight. You might be in your last character, a slither of health, one bar health, whatever, and you lock off and you're trying to find this guy. You can't find him, and you get cheap shot with a, with a, a stray blast or whatever, because he sees you. He locked on to you, which not locked on to him, and you get killed and lose the fight. It's annoying. It happens way too often, and I think they need to patch that in. I mean, not in, but they need to patch it up, change it, tweak it, or something like that. Because I'm not a big fan of that feature when it keeps happening. You know, it happens too often where you can't find the guy, or you find him for a split second, and he disappears again. You run around trying to find this guy, wasting key. It's a feature where it is simulation to the game to the series. Um, in actual gameplay, it can be mad annoying and, and, pro and problematic. I just think that's a feature that needs to tweak or something like that. Maybe once a match, twice a match, top something like that. It shouldn't happen every time you uh, switch a character out. You know, if you don't do it in a, uh, you know if you don't do it in like a uh, a combination switch or something. Um, we already mentioned the lack of maps, and of course. In my opinion, the gameplay, while it's good, it could be a lot better as far as the depth of it. There's the main button, square, which does mostly everything for you. And there's no dedicated heavy attack button in triangle, like kicks or heavy attacks. It's a mixture of a little bit of heavy and the key blast. So, honestly, it will not be long before you see the same combos over and over again, you know, and I think that the game could have been a little deeper uh, combat-wise. And I would prefer that because that's what I was expecting. Um, you know, fighters, deeper combat. I'm not saying it has to be at that level, but there's square and triangle. The old Budokai games, square was a button of combinations, triangle was buttons. You can mix them and match them to do different moves, different combinations. And I was hoping for something like that. The universe has that. You know, I was hoping for something like that. Key button is own dedicated button. Heavy button is on dedicated button. Light attack is on de dedicated button. Not light and then a mixture of 
some kind of heavy with key on one button. I, I I don't care for that personally. I think that they messed up the depth that it could have had with that. Um, there's, of course, there's all kinds of other things. Perce- perception, um, defensive techniques. So there's a lot of other things that help the gameplay be deep. But from the core mechanic, the core combination, the core fighting aspect, I think that they uh, did themselves a disservice with that. We got to talk about roster. Roster is big. It's great. But I am going to ding it just a little bit because the roster has some strange omissions. How do you not have Demon King Piccolo, Die Mal from Dragon Ball? You know, if you want to put Dragon Ball characters in here, King Goku, King Goku, whatever is in here, that's great. But how are you not going to have King Piccolo? How are you not going to have PyCon? How are you not going to have Super 17 and Nova Shinra who are in the other Tenkachi games? General Tao, Pi Pi. Um, but you have Bobbity in the game. But you have Kunkoons in the game and Rosie. I get their super characters, but let's be honest here. If we look at any poll on social media, if you ask 10 random people on the street, you tell them, listen, Kunkoons and Rosie are Super 17 of PyCon, Nova Shinron, and King Piccolo. 9 out of 10 people want to say the latter. You know, so I, some people might argue, well, they want a variety. They want a variety. Well, it's hard for you to have that argument stick when you got 20 Gokus in the game. That's kind of not really a good argument. So the roster, it was great. The best roster we've ever seen in a base game. Um, having some weird omissions like that don't make sense. I would have took, I think most people, if you ask them, would have took Super 17, whether you're a fan of GT or not. Over a Bobbity. It's a character you're never going to see be played. It's a character nobody's checking for. Nobody's checking for Rose and Kakunzi. They're only in the game to complete the, the Rebrand trail. You know, these kind of characters, nobody ultimately in real time, especially in the rank scene where it matters, are going to be played. So, it's just a strange omission. You know, so, then it's coming out there in the files. So, either they were cut from the game for some of these other characters I mentioned nobody really cares about. Um... Or they plan on being DLC, you know, and they're DLC. That's cool, I, and that's great. Hopefully they are. Hopefully the maps are DLC. But at base game core value, I have to judge it at face value. So those are the main things for me um, that I think uh, the game could be better about. You know, nothing major, but I can't. I gotta give it a ding. So overall, Sparking Zero is a nine out of ten for me. Nine out of ten. It's not perfect. Damn near close. But it's really, really good. As you have been wanting a Dragon Ball game to play, if you may wasn't really in the Xenoverse, or Kakarot, or Fire Vision at the, in the, two, five, two, the 2D, 2.5D, whatever, and you wanted a game simulation to the product, as close to the Dragon Ball experience that we've ever seen, this is the game. I would recommend this to anybody. Get it for holiday season. You know, whatever case may be. Um... Is really really good. So that's my review. Tell me if you guys agree, disagree. Like, share, subscribe. Until the next video, I will catch you guys later. Thank you for watching. Peace out.